All right, let's get started. So here we are going to talk about first Lego League Junior. So the purpose of this session for, um, is to give you an overview, a 360 overview of what the challenge is and what first Lego League Junior program is all about, how that fits into the other programs that first offers and what we do and some details about if especially that's going to be helpful for you if you are starting a new team this year and uh, planning to participate in one or more expos, this session is going to be helpful to give you some a guideline of what to do and when to plan for and what to plan for and all that stuff. So it's going to stay at a high level and if you want to dig uh, deeper and you are always welcome to talk to us and contact us from our gocivia.org, our webpage, or just see one of us and talk to us, ask questions. So we always try to help you as much as we can. All right, so let's get started. And um, my name is Shantanu Banerjee, and I am the first Lego League Junior Coordinator with CVR. I've been working with Central Valley Robotics for last uh, four years, uh, I would say, in the, uh, in the capacity as a, as a staff, work with Michael and other teams. And also, I have been a veteran FLL coach. I have done uh, first Lego League for four years before that. So that's how I got to know CVR and got interested and continued with that. So first, uh, some of you already know, but some of you, uh, for, the, for the benefit of who you don't know, first is an acronym, is uh, for Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology. And the founder of uh, FIRST, who introduced FIRST or got the concept, Dean Kamen, he says that FIRST is more than robots. The robots are just a vehicle for students to learn important life skills. Kids often come in not knowing about what to expect of the program, not themselves. They leave even after the first season with a vision, with confidence, and with a sense that they can create their own future. So basically untapping the potential the kids have, even starting from the elementary school level, from kindergarten. So this is all about that. So what first is, it was founded in 1989, and it was founded in, is a nonprofit organization. It was based in New Hampshire, Manchester. And it provides program, like Michael described in the first uh, session, it uh, creates program for kids who are in school, starting from kindergarten all the way to high school. And that goes parallel, not compete, but complement with the program that is offered in the school system. So the first program, the program that first offers that are starting from first Lego League Junior, then first Lego League, first Tech Challenge, and then finally first robotics competition. And as you can see on this slide, that the age group, they're kind of one after another, so th those are tiered. So as a kid graduates from a lower level program, they move up to the next level and to the next level, and finally, in the high school, they spend four years on the first, Lego, first FRC, that is first robotics championship program. The, yes. Third grade. Actually, K through four, this is the latest. Uh, yes. And when actually it's rather than the grades, grade, it's by age group. And I'm going to go over another slide, which says six through 10. So there may be kids in the borderline. So first, at the junior FLL or FLL level, they're a little bit flexible. But uh, six through 10 is the age group recommendation for junior. So what is first Lego League Junior? There is no age or no, there should not be a mi any minimum age limit to, to discover STEM or get into the ideas of, of something scientific uh, happenings or uh, like a technical thing that is happening. So there is no minimum age to get into that. So discovery can start from any age as early as like three or four years old. So what FIRST does, it, depending on the age group of the children, it creates a program that inspires thoughts, provoke thoughts, and get their, their inquisitive mind 
a curious mind into getting to the discovery mode so that if they want to learn about something, they want to explore something, first provides them a way through a program to get them those, encourage those thoughts in their minds. There are online resources for First Lego League Junior and there is a YouTube channel. So this slide that you see, they are the, a snippet from the YouTube channel. Uh, and the link is right here. If you go to youtube.com slash JR, that stands for Junior FLL Global, then you'll be able to find out all the videos that first posts. So the first owns this channel and all the latest and greatest videos are available here. If I find time, I'll go, I'm gonna show you a couple of them, but you can just go there and see it for yourself. They are very introductory, informative videos that will be able to help you to get you set um, into this program. And please take a note of this website. This is our website, gocvr.org to start. And we have just worked hard on this website. This is going to be a landing page. Whether you are in FLL Junior or FLL, if you come to this website, this should guide you and provide you link or direction to how to get your question answer, answered or get some resources. So please take a note of this link. So continued, continuing with what is First Lego League Junior. First Lego League Junior is a program and this is intended for children ages six through 10. And just like any other uh, league, there are teams and each team, according to first recommendation, can have at a minimum of two stu students or two kids or, and with a maximum up to six kids. The season starts in August, so the season start just, just started last month, and it runs until June. So that means, as you can see, the 2007 season is actually not exactly 2017. It's between 2017 dash 2018, so it overlaps two years. The registration begins in August, and the late registration, as late as you can do, that's up to April. So beyond that, FIRST does not accept any registration. And like I said, FIRST controls all the registration, so everywhere on this planet, whoever wants to register with FIRST, they have to go to FIRST website, so that way FIRST can keep track of what is happening where on this planet. So challenge theme, every year, just like all the pro programs that you have seen, FIRST creates a challenge. They come up with a challenge, they work on it for two years. So right now, when you we went to the first conference in Nashville, New Hampshire, they are working on the challenge for 2020. That's in, um, in inception mode. They are already working solidly, uh, solid on the 2018 challenge. And then 2019 challenge, they're thinking about it and brainstorming about it. So as you can see, there's two year lead time for them to work on it and give it a shape of a complete challenge. So new challenge is introduced every year and they come up with a theme and they come up with a challenge and typically the theme for the first Lego League Junior and first Lego League, they are along the same line. So this year is all about water. Hydrodynamics is the official name of the theme for first Lego League. For first Lego League Junior, it is Aqua Adventure. So, especially for First Lego League Junior, and so also similar to First Lego League, uh, the teams, what they have to do is, based on the challenge theme, they have to work on it, do some research, learn a whole lot of things, work with the coach and some experts, and learn about the subject topic, identify um, an issue or a problem that is associated with the topic, under the direction of the topic, and then propose a solution, come up with a concept that can help address that topic or that challenge. And then as an artifacts, they have to create a show me poster, which will describe in brief about what, what they have learned, what they're proposing in form of a poster. For First Lego League Junior, it's just a trifold poster and they have to put, they can put um, handwritten notes, stickers, pictures and whatnot. So 
first encourages them to be creative and be very um, creative and innovative with the Show Me poster. So that's one artifact the teams have to create. And the other one is a model, a Lego model. So what they have to do is, based on the theme and based on their research, they have to create a Lego model with a motorized part. And I'm going to go through that, how to get that and how to build it. So they have to create a model which is going to demonstrate either the com complete solution that they are trying to propose or part of the solution they are trying to propose in, in, in a Lego-built motorized model. So these are the only two things that are uh, expected from the team that they need to bring to an expo. And I'm going to go over what an expo is. Expo is nothing but um, an event that they, all the teams, all the FLL junior teams will have to come to. They can come to one or more expo events, and they have to demonstrate what they have done in terms of those two artifacts, show me poster and model. Any question? Events are called expos, and basically when we say expo, we refer to the term expo, that means it is a FLL junior event, and an expo is basically a gathering of teams, all the teams come, that is, it's like an exhibition, they, they are given a table, and they sit there, they display their model, they display their uh, show me poster, and they ask questions, they answer questions, and I'm going to go over the, during the expo part also, there is a review session that some of the expert reviewers, they talk to the kids and get to know the kids, get to know about the project, and that's pretty much, pretty much it. So it's mostly about sharing and learning together. All the expo events are very fun event. I'm going to go over that in a bit. All the expo events are uh, about two to four hours long, typically, and the, there are unofficial events which a community or a school or any other organization can arrange, but only the first official partners can arrange the first official expo. And whenever we, like Central Valley Robotics, arrange an event, we register that with first, so, and that is visible worldwide. So any teams from anywhere, theoretically, can come to our expo. So, so far for this year, we have 15 teams, and as Michael said in his presentation, that our expo is going to be on uh, February 24th, along with our champ first Lego League Championship. So what we do there, we have a, session, a section of the championship which is dedicated for um, the first Lego League Junior. Last year we did it in the afternoon, uh, and, and also probably this year we are going to do it in the afternoon as well. But that's the day when we are going to have first Lego League Junior CVR Expo. But there are other expos, and for, for, for sure, Fresno County Office of Education they do an expo sometime in April, and also the teams, there are other teams which come to that expo. So you'll have multiple options to go to one or more expos, and all information will be available on the, our website, and you, if you already got the link, you should be able to go there and see the information and the calendar, which expo is happening when. Now who? Who are the players in FLL Junior? Teams. Teams can be formed by homeschoolers, kids who are homeschooled, after, as after school program, as uh, in the elementary school, parent teachers association, they can form a team. And if there are private science centers, nonprofit organizations who want to form a team, and museums, scouts, and so on. So, Pretty much it is open, anyone and everyone who have kids in that age group and want to uh, explore the FLL Junior and want to form a team, they'll be able to do that. The cost of forming a team is not that high. If you are individual and there is a, you want to form a team, for forming an individual team, roughly the cost is about $300. And most of the time, the school or the sponsoring organization, they come up with, a, with, a, with some uh, um, grant or something like that. So that helps out a little bit. And if you're especially trying to form a team and money is an issue, CVR in association with Bricks for Kids, we have grant programs. So in the next session, Judy is going to talk to you about what we do. So if you are interested to apply for a grant or want to know what a grant is, how much money you get, and, and all that we do kit you get, please talk to her. Okay? Now, 
One thing that first needs is for each and every team, they need two adult coaches. Absolutely, that is a requirement for each and every team. There has to be two coaches. So who can be a coach? The coaches do not need to have any prior experience. Somebody, all, it, all they need to have some willingness and some time to volunteer. That's all they need. It is not a technical, uh, there is no technical know-how that a person who is going to serve, who is going to take the role as a coach, they need to know. So pretty much somebody who is capable, has some time and willing to spend some time, that's pretty much it. Parents, teachers, engineers, scientists, librarians, community volunteers, students, everyone can be a coach. What the coach is supposed to do? Very simple, mentoring the children. Liaison with parents and community. Of course, as you can see, kids from six through 10, they need a lot of guidance, a lot of monitoring. So the coach need to work with the parents or the guardian of the corresponding kids. Set expectation for the team. And as you can understand, the only thing the coach need to have is patience because having uh, six through 10, two to six, up to two to six kids, it's not, may not be always simple. You have to kind of keep them together, get them focused. So the coach needs to have some patience and I believe all of you uh, have that. Guide the team with core values. And I'm going to go through the core values. And this is something, especially who are new to the first programs, they should know. First has a recommended set of core values. The core values for first Lego League juniors are simple. For first Lego League, they are a little more elaborated, but the core values, all the team members at all the time when they're working in a first program, they have to go by the core values. And especially in the first Lego League, we observe in any of our championship or qualifiers, we observe whether the core values are followed, followed strictly or not. Especially in the FLL, uh, FLL, first Lego League, if there is any first violation of core values, that is noted in their, um, in their result sheet. And in case of it is a big violation, they are prevented from getting an award. And we have not seen any violation in the first Lego League Junior in our case in the recent years. But there are core values, and please note that as a coach, you need to make sure that all your team members and the coaches and the men, adults who are coming to an event, they need to follow the core values. And what are those? I'm just going to read it, and they're exactly as first recommended. We are a team. We do the work. Our coaches and mentors help us learn, but we find the answers ourselves. We share our experience and discoveries with others. We are helpful, kind, and show respect when we work, play, and share. We call this gracious professionalism. And this is something uh, that first, always first gives it a lot of emphasis and importance that always, whenever, in whatever situation, they expect all the participants in, in all the teams to be gracious, to show gracious prof professionalism. We are all winners. This is very important because the first Lego League Junior program is not competitive. Everyone who participate in the program, they're recognized for what they have done, they're recognized for what they have learned, and they're awarded a certificate or a medal, and they get to show up in the high five line that we form in the championship, and they are recognized. So basically, the whole idea is to make each and every participant feel that they have achieved something by participating in the, in the program and coming to an expo. And last, but not the least, and probably this is the most emphasized core values in FIRST, is we have fun. Without fun, there is no fun in learning. So no matter what the, what the team does, what kind of project they choose, what kind of model they want to create, they have to have fun. And the coaches and mentors for each and every team, they need to keep an eye on that, that no matter whatever research item, research project they find out, it should have the element of fun in there. All right, so now the challenge. Like I said, every year, first comes up with a theme, and then based on that theme, 
they propose a challenge. So uh, first has a group of experts, and they work with them to come up with a challenge for every year. And the challenge correlates or relates to the real world topic. And there are some examples, like in the past years, we have seen challenges based on climate, transportation, food, seniors, and animals. This year, the theme is water. So what they do, like I said, so I'm repeating some of the information so that you can just get it properly. Uh, the challenge is, the, to, to complete the challenge, every team has to come up with two things, a show me poster and a Lego model. 2017 FLL Junior Challenge is Aqua Adventure. And the challenge, how it reads from first is, explore how you use water at home or in, in, your, or in your community. The water's journey and how to improve the part of this journey. So that means when, wherever you are getting your domestic water from, the path that the water travels from the provider to your tap, to your, in your home, the journey of the water, learn about it. And then find out how you can improve any part of that journey. Explore, do research, and create, come up with some ideas, and demonstrate that in the Show Me poster and your Lego model. That's pretty much it, simple. And we are going to have some experts in a, in a later session who are going to talk about some water. So depending on if you are interested or if you are Two of you are here from uh, one team. You may want to sit in split, and one can go to the first Lego League we do session. One can stay here, so that depends. So some example of challenge component. In the, in the challenge component, like I said, you have to bring, uh, all the teams have to bring a model. So a model is, what, what are the characteristics of a model? A model that is built by the tree team must be built with only and only Lego elements. So if you use something as simple as like a, like a rubber band or like any flag or any paper, that is not allowed. Anything and everything that goes in the model has to be from Lego. Typically, like a board with a 15 by 15, that is good enough for First Lego League Junior to build the model, so they're going to prov that's going to provide a as a base to store your model. And the model that every team is going to build and display at the expo has to have at least one motorized part. So those who are new to uh, robotics and ro robot like motorized model, you will see that um, there is a we do kit that I'm going to show you in the uh, next few slides that uh, you can purchase and that has motor, that has instruction, and there are online resources which you can use to build the motorized part. And also, Judy is going to show you in the next session an introductory uh, overview of what is we do, how you can use it, so you'll learn a whole lot there too. And your model should have at least one simple machine. So these are the minimal requirements. The model that teams are going to build, they have, must be conforming with the theme of the year and must be under the direction or guidance of the challenge of the corresponding year. Any question? So this is an example of an model from a past season. As you can see, there, there is a truck or a vehicle right in the center, and there are pieces. There are some pieces which can be operated manually, and there are some pieces in the center line for right here. I don't think you can see my uh, cursor, but right in like the middle of the southern border of this, uh, of this model, there, are, there is a motor which is going to drive some mechanized or motorized pieces. So this is just an example. And there is not really any strict guideline of what you can do or what you cannot do, as long as you stick to the rules and regulations for uh, the model building rules, you should be fine. Another example of what this is, what the, what the model looks like. And here, 
the, it is labeled, so that you can see the motorized component, and also you can see the simple, simple machine. All right, so the other part of the uh, challenge component is show me poster. And show me poster is pretty much the demonstration of what the children's have, children have done and what they have learned and what the team is all about. So the show me poster is going to demonstrate the team. And I have seen the teams list their team members, sometime with the pictures of the team members, sometime they write some fun stuff about the team and uh, handwritten notes also, so you can be very creative there. It must include the topic and what they have done, done on the topic, what kind of research they have done, and also what kind of model they have created and motorized part and how that is going to solve the challenge and some demonstration about it. So this is an example of a show me poster and I have a a magnified view of that, as you can see. Again, there is no strict guidelines as long as you are following the rules of Show Me Poster, you should be fine. And I encourage you to be very creative and let your kids come up with ideas and options to do this Show Me Poster. So, are you alone? Of course not. On this big planet, there are, as of uh, the latest survey, about 68,000 participants in First Lego League Junior. About 11,500 teams worldwide. About 11,500 models, and those two numbers are same because one team creates one model. 400 events, and in 41 countries, and these are growing. And first is trying to use, or they're planning to use, the first Lego League Junior as the feeder program to all subsequent programs. So they are putting lots of emphasis on getting more and more students, more and more teams in the first Lego League Junior so that that can act as feeder to the subsequent levels. So a short, uh, a, a quick view of the first Lego League Junior season and the life cycle of a team. So the first and foremost thing as coaches, what you have to do is register teams. And if you come to gocvr.org website or go to firstinspires.org, you will get direction about how to create a team. It's super simple. Then the next thing is you have to, once you register a team, there is a fee that you have to pay. And like I said, sometimes schools come in, they pitch in, Sometimes the nonprofit organization come in, they, they also help. So, but if you want to do it all by yourself, you have to pay the fee to first, and that's when your team registration is confirmed. And then you can download the challenge material, and also as a part of your registration, you get the challenge set, the challenge materials, all the documents that you need, and I'm going to go through that in a bit. So once you are registered, and once you have the documents, you can begin your season. You have to plan for it, as a coach, you have to plan for how you want to distribute the workload on which day you are going to do what, and plan the meetings, plan the schedule, and it's about six to eight weeks, so I, I would rather advise you to keep eight weeks at a minimum, and then if you want to go slow, it can be 10 weeks, 12 weeks, that's totally up to you. First, doesn't say anything or give a clear direction to you how many weeks you should plan, it's totally up to you, based on the 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 speed of learning of your students, you can just go slow or go fast. So after you begin the season, there'll be meetings. You can do a bi-weekly meeting, you can do a weekly meeting. Most of the teams do meet at least once a week or some teams meet, meet two times a week. But they work on the project and they work on the poster, they work on the research, they work on the challenge, get the kids to know about the challenge, come up with ideas. Sometimes some teams go to an expert Either the expert come to the kids or the kids travel to the expert. Either way is fine. And they document their learning and everything is supposed to go to the, not everything meaning in a summarized form, supposed to go to the show me poster. 
So they work, work on the project, and finally, when they are ready, they attend an expo. So if you already have a plan, or you make a plan to attend a particular expo, then you may want to back calculate when you need to start the, the meeting or start the season for your team. You can do that, or you can just start right away, and when they're done, subscribe or um, register for an expo and appear at, at, the, at that expo. You do not have to go to just one expo. There are many teams who go to multiple expos. So multiple expos, when they come back from one expo, they learn something new. They may want to modify their poster and go to another expo. It's all fun, and I encourage, if there are multiple expos and you have time, I would like you to do that. So let's take a close look at each of the steps. Register a team. If you go to first inspires.org website and click on and follow the junior FLL link, you should be able to go and register your team. Registration is open from August and it runs until April. So if you want to give it some time, wait a month and try to uh, work with the parents, form a team, then you have time. So no rush, but I would like you to do probably within next month or two, if you have a good idea about who are going to form a team, who are going to be your, your team members, go ahead and form a team and get started early. So the link that you have seen, and again, the first inspires.org, at least if you remember this, just go there, and you should be able to get all the directions about how to register a team. So once the team is created or registered, you have to create a profile, and first lets you enter the, the team member name and the coach's name, and like I said, each team has to have two adult coaches. So you get a temporary number when you register, but like first, they need you to pay, so once you make the payment, they will finalize your team number. And Make sure the user ID and password that you create or you use to register your team, don't forget that. If you forget, first should be able to email you the password or reset your password, but it's better to keep it safe somewhere so that you don't forget because you need to use it over and over again. So once you register for the team, what do you get? You get a few things from first as a part of your registration. And there are several registration options, especially the season pass, which I'm going to just highlight because many of you may not even consider the season pass because it is for the schools or groups who want to have more teams and want to administer the teams. But for individual reg registration, what you get is an Inspire set. Inspire set is every year, based on the theme of that year, first already gives you a set of Lego pieces and instruction. So this is like a, a box of Lego items with instruction, which you have to, you want your kids to build, and that is to get them a kickstart in the process. So Inspire said, we'll build a model that will go along with the theme of the year, and the kids will be able to build it following the instruction, and all the materials, all the components that you need to build that model, Inspire model, is included in that Inspire set. I have a... This is how that is, this is how that is going to look like when you get an Inspire set. After the session, if you want to come here and take a look, you are very welcome to. Then you get the challenge doc. Yes. Absolutely you can, but not unlimited number of times. Each registration comes up with 24, uh, oh, with 12, sorry, not 24, with 12 notebooks, and which are this, and that's actually the next challenge document. So after you get a challenge document. That's one page document that displays, talks about the challenge. But we get this too. You get an engineering notebook and a meeting guide. 
So you get one meeting guide because one team just needs one meeting guide for the coaches, but you get 12 of engineering notebooks. And like I said, each FLL junior team can have, have up to six kids and you get 12 of them. So that means you can have two teams using one registration. So if you want to run, have those two teams run parallelly, you can do that. If you want to break them like one after another, you can do that as well. But these are supposed to be given to each participant, participating member, and these are, they, are, they are going to write on it. So that means one engineering notebook can be used by one child only. So if you want to do it six plus six separately or six plus six in parallel, that's up to you. But you can have up to two teams or 12 children. Does that answer your question? You can have one, one registration, but I think you have to go to first website. I think you will have the same team number. You'll be just participating under two events or something like that. You have to check on that, how they're going to. They're building on the same model. So if you want to just, yeah, so they cannot go to the same expo. No, they cannot go to the same expo. So you have to go to different expos. All right, so one more thing you have to remember that, that registering for a team, that does not get you to an expo. Depending on how many expos you want to attend and wherever you want to attend, you have to register for the expo separately and each expo registration has a fee. It's nominal fee, but there is a fee. So that is not included. So after you register for a team, and get all the materials and prepare your team for the expo, you have to register for an expo and attend the expo and for a separate fee. And like I said, the fee is nominal and most of the time if it is a sponsored program by your school, the school provides the money. It changes, I think for this year, it's going to be around 60 or $70 in that range. All right, so that was the challenge document, uh, challenge material, the engineering uh, team meeting guide and engineering notebook. This team meeting guide provides a lot of information for the coaches and it is a very helpful guide and it's pretty much uh, a turnkey type of uh, document that if the coach follows this document, she or she should be able to continue with the season without much headache. The other thing that the team needs to build is, like I said, the motorized or mechanized model. To do that, you have to get the WeDo course set, and this is from LEGO Education. And this is where FIRST has a relationship with LEGO, and LEGO Education, based on every year's theme, they create, uh, this is not based on every year's theme, but they have a generic set of uh, motor and some parts, you, and you can buy that and you can create any model of your choice from the parts from this Lego. If you want to build two models and you are interested to have two mechanized parts, you can have two, you can buy two kits or borrow kits from another team and have two, motor, two mechanized parts as well. So it comes with the software also and the software, Judy is going to talk to you about the software in her session, how to, it's very easy, drag and drop, it doesn't, need anyone to learn in programming language. Basically, it's a UI-driven, user interface-driven, just like you do your PowerPoint or simple um, note editing on a computer. So basic computer skills are good enough to program this uh, mechanized model. So, that, so that's what you have to get. So then when you have the documents and you have the we do set, you can begin the season. So make sure, these are some helpful reminders, make sure when you are building a season, um, 9.50. So I'm just going to take uh, two, three more minutes, finish it up quickly. When you are beginning the season, make sure you know that where to meet and how many students you are getting. Get yourself familiar with the season, with the challenge. 
and go through the team meeting guide. This is very important for the coach to know this guide in advance to do better planning. And go through the engineering notebook and then plan meetings. And decide how, many, how often you want to meet, whether weekly, bi-weekly, or two times a week. Communicate that to the parents. Communication between the coaches and parents are very important. I find that very useful if you plan ahead of time and communicate that to the parents. Your team is, your meeting schedule and everything is going to run smoothly. And sometimes you want to have a, a, like a head parent or someone because kids, if they are in a session for two hours, there have to be snacks and things like that. You may want to arrange for that as well. Like. Usual schedule, six to eight weeks, could be once or twice a meeting, and one to two hours, and you have flexibility to decide on that. And once you do that, you will get the ball rolling, and then you are going to work on the project in, during those meetings. So you have to use the team meeting guide to do that, and the kids are working on the engineering, engineering notebook through the meetings, and they have to record their findings, record their progress in the notebook. And it's already given to you, so the template is already given. It's not a difficult task. And keep meetings and the kids busy and focused. That's very important. And whenever kids are working with Lego pieces, they are 6 to 10, so there can be things that are lost under the carpet and under the table. Make sure you don't lose important pieces because you will need them. Make sure they are stored safely somewhere. Coach is there to guide the children. Again, coach is not going to do the work. The coach is going to act as a facilitator, and the kids are going to do the work. And follow the core values throughout the season. Make sure all your team members know about the core values. And have fun. You cannot miss that. So finally, when you are done, attend an expo. An expo is an opportunity to showcase what the kids have learned. And children will exp ex explain their model and their uh, show me poster to the audience. And it's basically like an ex exhibition style, except there is going to be a separate review session where the reviewers who are volunteers, expert in the relevant field, they will take the kids in a, in a room and ask a few questions. It's very friendly, not an examination, not a viva voce, very friendly. Most likely, uh, there, there will be in an expo, there will be some fun activities, build Lego or some physics or related. Um, um, some people can come and demonstrate uh, science experiment, things like that, to make the event more interesting. And it is supposed to be a fun community event. And a picture of the event. And what happens after the event? Some teams are invited by first to go to their world showcase, and that depends on the region. So if one team is picked from our region, they'll be invited to go to the World Showcase, and that will be an extra cost. And sometimes it is, it is significant because you have to fly to Houston or somewhere where they organize the expo. But that is also an option. Important websites, first, inspires.org. That's the US website, and legoeducation.us. And YouTube, of course, the first channel. And the first in inspires, there are challenges and resources. So if you pretty much go to firstinspires.org, you'll get all the links. And last but not the least, our website. And we have plenty of information, also a link to first websites. So if you go to gocvr.org, start, and you'll get helpful links to go anywhere and everywhere that you need to go to to learn about the program. If you need more help, contact us at gocvr.org, and there are links where you can just type in your question. One of us is going to get your question, we'll call you, or we'll reply to you by email. And thank you for supporting this. Without you, this program will not exist. So we are just trying to volunteer to help this move forward, and you are the key person to get this going. So thank you very much for coming. If you have any other question, feel free to go to our website, ask us, and I encourage you to attend the subsequent sessions. We do, where Judy is going to demonstrate the WeDo software. Thank you.